Number 10, the Dendera lights. When was the first light bulb invented? Well, it was way after the common era calendar started, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe the ancient Egyptians had some hookups for light bulbs and they used to throw dope raves. The Hathor temple in Dendera, Egypt has carvings in the wall which look like gigantic light bulbs. The Egyptians may have found a way to harness some sort of energy to make light bulbs. If we're going to go super conspiracy theory, which we are, some people believe that the pyramids were actually power plants with copper wires inside of them. They used them to tap into the natural electrical energy floating around the atmosphere, pull it down into the earth and send it into surrounding cities. If this is true, my Egyptian rave theory is not that far off. Number 9, Robots? We barely have robots now and you're telling me that before they had toilet paper they were making robots? Well not that high tech but it's still pretty cool. In ancient Greece, Philion of Byzantium made a working maid. The way this contraption worked, it was a statue with moving parts. It was perfectly weighted with a pitcher in one hand and the other hand was open. When you placed a cup in the open hand, it would shift the weight of the statue, causing it to move and pour the pitcher into the cup. Basically the best bartender ever. He'll never cut you off. This was one of the only artifacts like this, so it's most likely that robots weren't commonplace back then. It was probably only the super rich ancient Greeks that could afford it. This robot was the 8K TV of its day. Number 8, Turkish Gilding. Over 8,000 years ago, the Turks were balling. They were putting gold on everything. They put gold on your house, gold in your chairs, gold on your baby. I don't know if that last one is true, but it was 8,000 years ago. I'm sure someone had to try. Who wouldn't want to put gold on a baby? That'd be dope. You have a golden baby. The Turks would use mercury to perfect this gilding process and they were so good at it that we still haven't figured out how to do it to this day. It's 8,000 years later and with all the technological advancements we have now, we still can't find out exactly how they did it. Maybe it was aliens. Maybe the alien version of Bobby Shmurda came down and helped them put gold on everything. In our seventh spot we have the Petrodox. This next artifact is quite strange and might have been made by aliens. Let me explain. So back in 1998, a man named John J. Williams discovered something quite strange. He was out hiking in North America when he saw this thing sticking out of the ground. It looked as if it was an electrical connector. When he unearthed it, he discovered that this device was embedded into a rock. The rock has three metallic prongs just sticking out of it, and it wasn't glued or welded into the rock. Leading researchers believe that it existed while the rock was forming. But here's the thing, research shows that the rock is 100,000 years old. Back then we didn't have electrical components like that, so what the heck? Now Williams won't let anyone break into the object to further analyze it, but x-rays done on the stone show that it has a weird opaque internal structure. He's convinced that this thing is from an advanced ancient civilization or from an extraterrestrial race, aka aliens, like I'm not gonna lie but it's pretty weird, so just saying. Coming in at number six, we have the Baghdad battery. Here is yet another example of how our ancestors absolutely soared past our expectations of them. We thought electricity was just a modern thing. A 2000 year old battery discovered by Wilhelm Koenig in 1940. It was uncovered during a dig of an ancient village near Baghdad and set the minds of archeologists spinning. It is a 5.5 inch high clay vessel with a copper cylinder inside and an oxidized iron rod suspended within the cylinder not touching the sides and the two entrances are closed off by asphalt plugs. It is suspected that this makeshift battery served as a way of electroplating gold onto silver only needing to be filled with some kind of acid like wine or vinegar in order to work. Today some researchers believe that it was actually just a storage container but that's not true. Come on. But replicas created by American electrical researcher Willard Gray after World War II actually produced around 2 volts of electricity. I love discoveries like this because it tells us just how ahead of the game we were and gave a delicious dose of foreshadowing at where we are heading as a civilization. We are now at our 5th and halfway mark with the witch bottles. Back in 2019, contractors were demolishing the chimney of a pub and inn in England when they came across something frightening. Inside the chimney were bottles containing things such as fish hooks, human teeth, and urine. But this isn't actually that weird of a find. 
In the 15th, 16th, and 17th century, people kept these in their home. They were referred to as witch bottles and were meant to keep witches away. Some of the bottles had fingernails and hair in them, and those were meant to act like charms to ward them away. But they were most commonly filled with pins, thorns, and urine. Apparently, the urine attracted the witches to the bottle, and then they would be tracked on the pins. These bottles have been found in churchyards, old buildings, and riverbanks all across Great Britain. I mean, I think that would be a pretty cool discovery if you found that in your house, just minus the jars of urine. Coming in at number four, we have a 250,000 year old aluminum wedge. Aluminum, a material found in every kitchen for barbecue or you know, just like cooking in general. It's one of the most common place materials found on earth, making up approximately 8.2% of the earth's crust. However, we as humans only figured out how to extract it in the 1800s, taking even longer to figure out how to make it cost effective to do so. So when researchers found a five pound crafted aluminum object in Romania, buried next to 10,000 year old mass Stone bones, they had some questions. The object has clearly been crafted by someone for some purpose and is a combination of several materials, aluminum making up 89% of that. The aluminum wedge has been theorized to have been everything from a tool to a landing foot of perhaps an extraterrestrial ship. This object also feeds into the theory that there was a far advanced human civilization that existed long before us that was wiped out. This isn't the first time we've talked about aliens and forgotten civilizations and honestly, the more videos we make, I'm getting swept away by the possibilities because how like nuts would that be? Anyways, whatever it was used for or whomever it used to belong to remains a mystery and leaves more questions than answers behind. In our third spot, we have the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone was discovered in 1799 and is a broken off section of a bigger stone slab. On it, it contains messages written in three different types of scripts. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, Demotic scripts, and Ancient Greek. This stone is said to be the key to decipher Egyptian scripts. The stone was discovered by soldiers belonging to Napoleon Bonaparte's army. In July of 1799, they were digging around and found it near the town of Rashid, and it was built into an old wall. In 1814, British scientist Thomas Young started studying the stone and made some progress with cracking it. But it wasn't until 1822 to 1824 that the hieroglyphic code was cracked. This was done by French linguist Jean-Francois Champollion. It's hypothesized that the slab was created in Egypt in 196 BC, but we still don't know who created it, and honestly, why? Some say it holds the key to be able to communicate with aliens, and that it actually came from space. At this point, who knows? Then we just seem like we love aliens. Aliens! Coming in at number two, we have the Nazca Lines. Despite years of research, the Nazca Lines still don't make sense. For those of you who haven't heard, the Nazca Lines are massive geoglyphs that can even be seen from space. In fact, they can only be seen fully from the sky. Located 250 miles south of Lima, Peru, created by the Nazca people, there are over 70 precise depictions of animals, including spiders and hummingbirds, plus an image of a decapitation and a large humanoid figure known as the astronaut. Hmm. Guys, come on, aliens. Some of the designs from the geoglyphs measure around 30 miles, and experts have no idea how or why these drawings were created with such precision. After all, humans lack the tools to build such incredible designs. Or did they? It really makes you wonder what abilities or perhaps extraterrestrial intelligence was available to the Nazca people that we can't comprehend today. And in our number one spot, we have the Shroud of Turin, otherwise known as the Holy Shroud. This is a piece of linen that is said to have been wrapped around Jesus during his burial. What's fascinating is how this piece of linen cloth appears to have a facial outline of Jesus's face. Of course, over the years, there have been disputes to whether or not this is authentic. But in the 1970s, it was discovered that the markings on the cloth were consistent with a crucified body, and that the blood stains on it were from real human blood. But others argue that the shroud doesn't come from the right time period as Jesus. And in 2018, a team of researchers claimed that the blood stains couldn't have come from him. Either way, it acts kind of like a symbol for the story of Christ. If it's not real, then someone please explain to me the whole face and body print that I see on it, because I'm genuinely curious. Coming in at number 10, we have the Ulfbert Swords. Imagine if Excalibur was real, and it wasn't just a story after all. Here at number 10, we have swords that are so powerful, they still have experts baffled. When you think of medieval times, you probably picture a bunch of people carrying cool broadswords everywhere. But in reality, swords were actually incredibly expensive to have made. Even
even around this time, anywhere between 1200 to 24 grand in today's currency for one sword. And that's just for a pretty good sword. For a really good sword, well, get ready to sell your soul, man. The Ulfbert swords were the strongest, sharpest, and most flexible swords ever made, though no one really knows who made them, except maybe a guy named Ulfbert, but there's no record of him. Primarily associated with Vikings, researchers speculate that the swords were made in the Kingdom of Francia. The Kingdom of Francia, now France and Germany. These suckers could even cut through chain mail and were the perfect blend of materials. The process for combining the materials required a 1600 degree Celsius oven, which was not only hot enough to melt the metals, but also helped draw out any impurities. However, here's where things get weird. The process couldn't be replicated until the industrial era after the sword stopped production after 200 years. So how could they have been made before that? No one knows who began it and who carried on the tradition, but the blade still remains some of the finest ever made in history. Coming in at number 9 we have Stonehenge. Located in Wiltshire, England, the Stonehenge is one of UK's most famous landmarks. It consists of a bunch of standing stones in a ring, with some stones placed on top of each other. It's said to have taken 1500 years to build this. It was built around 5,000 to 4,000 years ago. Some stones are 30 feet tall and weigh 25 tons. The smallest stones weigh about 4 tons. So how the heck did these people manage to build this big structure? That is something we still don't have the answers to. It's not like they had the machinery back then to help them. So how did they move these hefty rocks and then get them on top of each other? Did they possess super human strength or what? Not only that, but we don't know why they were built. Some believe that it was part of a burial ground. Others think that it was part of ritual activities. But we still don't know for sure. And unless a builder comes back from the dead to tell us, I doubt we'll ever figure out what the purpose behind Stonehenge is. Coming in at number 8, we have the Dropa Stones. I honestly love how many times I get to talk about potential alien stuff on this channel. In 1938, 716 12,000 year old circular disks were discovered in a cave between the border of China and Tibet. About one foot in diameter, the disks allegedly told the story of an alien ship crash landing and that the ship contained the Dropa people. Near the site, Dr. Chi Tai also found tiny skeleton bodies with larger than normal heads, like they were kind of like oval and shaped. Though no photos or documentation to prove that that part exists. The discs were stored in Beijing University for two decades before they were released to be studied, and one researcher was the one to decipher the extraterrestrial tale in just four years. However, after the stones were taken down after the exhibition, they haven't been seen since. Many say they are still at the university, while others speculate whether they existed at all. Some, however, were sent to Russia to be studied, where part of their studies included placing the discs on a turntable. The discs appeared to hum, but any further details on what they found still remain a mystery. Number 7. Lunar Tack Disc When you think of Vikings, you think of pillagers, murderers, pointy hats. But they were also some of the best sailors alive. They were kings of navigating the sea, pulling up on some foreign shore and cutting everyone's head off. So it shouldn't be a huge surprise that they might have been the first civilization to discover a compass. The Lunar Tack Disc was discovered in Greenland in 1984. It's believed that the Vikings would use these devices at night when they couldn't use the sun to navigate. It's not certain how these devices would work, but it seems they would give the user a rough idea of where the sun would be in the sky after it was set. The lunar tack disc would work in parts with other things like wooden slabs and crystals. I never thought bloodthirsty vikings would be into crystals. You come home after a long day of mass murder and your wife's like, whoa, your chakras are all over the place. Number 6. The Bell I don't know if you know this, but coal takes at least 30 million years to form. That's why this next one is pretty interesting. This one is a brass bell which was discovered encased in a chunk of coal. The coal that the bell was encased in was over 300 million years old and the mine that the bell was found in was over 100 feet deep. The bell also had carvings which were similar to the Hindu god Garuda, but the bell was discovered in West Virginia. How did a brass bell with Hindu god carvings encased in 300 million year old coal end up in West Virginia? These are so many questions, but it might be signs of advanced civilizations existing in North America way before we think. Number 5. The Puri Reese Map 
Cartography is pretty easy now that we have satellites. We can see the whole world from space and just take a picture and then print out the picture. But then the printer's like, I can't print it, I'm out of color. And you're like, whatever, just print in black and white. And he's like, nah, I need more magenta. And you're like, I said black and white. Believe it or not, making maps was even harder back then. The Puri Rees map was discovered in 1929 by Gustav Adolf Deismann, and it was an absolute marvel. The map depicted a very detailed charting of Antarctica before it was covered with ice. It was made by cartographer Haji Ahmed Muhiddin Puri. The map is so incredibly detailed that it puzzled the archaeologists that found it. Who was able to make something this detailed without some sort of advanced technology? Also, we can't compare it to what Antarctica would look like because it's now covered in ice. So we'll just have to wait to find find out if it's actually accurate. Number 4. The London Hammer This isn't some bad 80s hair metal band. This is the discovery of one of the oldest dated tools ever. The London Hammer was discovered by a couple who went out for a walk and they saw a chunk of wood coming out of a rock. They thought it looked interesting enough so they took it home. Later, their son decided to take a hammer and chisel to it and break into it. Inside, he found what looked like a crude design of a hammer. They took the hammer to some archaeologists and this is where things get crazy. The rock encasing the hammer dates back 400 million years and the iron used to make the hammer's head is over 500 million years old. The hammer's head is over 90% pure iron so there's no way this could have happened naturally in nature. Parts of the hammer's handle have been turned to coal which means the hammer itself is at least 30 million years old because the coal takes at least 30 million years to form. My guess is someone jumped into a time machine and got stuck way back. Never be the first guy to go into a time machine. Wait until they work out the kinks. Number 3. The Coso Artifact in 1961, a group of hikers was going rock collecting somewhere in the California mountains. These guys were super cool dudes. They came across some geodes, which are crystals encased in rock. They took them home to cut into them to see what kind of crystals would be inside. What they found was more than just crystals, but a porcelain casing, a spring, and some metal parts encased inside the rock. The pieces all resembled a spark plug but the rock was dated 5,000 years old. The craziest part about this is the Kazo artifact and the three hikers who made the discovery have all gone missing. Super creepy. Number two, nuclear reactor. How old would you think the first ever nuclear reactor is? If I told you it was 10,000 years old, you probably wouldn't believe me. Well, this nuclear reactor discovered in Gaboon, Africa is actually way older than that. In 1972, a team of archaeologists dug up a 1.8 million year old nuclear reactor. They were able to determine the age through carbon dating and from the design, it seems like it was man-made. This is one of the craziest discoveries ever recorded. Some people think that it was a meteor that crashed into the earth and just left back some nuclear energy. But other people think that it was aliens who came here to bioengineer humans and create new life and then study it from a distant planet. I don't know. And maybe everyone's wrong. Maybe some people are right. I don't know. Number one, spheres. If you find one naturally occurring anomaly, you can chalk it up to chance. But if you find over 200 in the same place over a 30 year period, then I guess there might be something going on. Metallic spheres started popping up in a mine in South Africa in the 1970s. There were metal on the outside with some line markings that go down the center. They range from sizes of two and a half centimeters to 10 centimeters. If you break into them, they seem to have some some sort of soft material in them that breaks down when it comes in contact with the air. So far it's not that crazy. But these spheres are dated back 2.8 billion years before dinos, before almost anything. How could you have something that's clearly crafted dated so old? Obviously I don't have the answer, but we can speculate. Time travel? Aliens? Maybe this is human beings second run at life. Maybe there's been civilizations that have lived on this planet before and we're just another group taking a shot at life. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot we have Ed Gein's Cauldron. Ed Gein's Cauldron is a cast iron pot that was found on the property of the infamous serial killer Ed Gein. Gein was known for his gruesome crimes in the 1950s and when police searched his property they discovered not only the remains of his victims but also various macabre artifacts made from human bones and skin. Among these items was the cauldron which Gein allegedly used to hold body parts during his gruesome acts. After Gein's arrest the cauldron was kept as evidence for several years before being returned to his family. However it is said that the cauldron is cursed and has brought misfortune to anyone who has possessed it. A 
According to legend, a man who bought the cauldron in the 1960s met a very quick and horrible demise shortly afterward. And another owner reportedly suffered from a series of tragic accidents. Today, the cauldron's whereabouts are unknown, and it remains a mysterious and haunting artifact associated with one of America's most notorious criminals. In our number nine spot today, we have John Merle's thumb. John Merle's thumb is a small, shriveled digit that is believed to have belonged to John Merle, a notorious American criminal who lived during the 19th century. The digit is said to possess a powerful curse and is associated with various tales of hauntings and misfortune. One of the most popular legends surrounding the thumb is that it is cursed to bring bad luck to anyone who possesses it. According to the legend, the thumb was cut off from Muriel's body after his execution and passed down through a series of owners who all experienced misfortune and tragedy. It is said that the thumb would cause accidents, sickness, and even death to those who kept it in their possession. Another tale tells of a man who came into possession of the thumb and began experiencing strange occurrences, such as objects moving on their own and eerie whispers in the night. The man eventually became so terrified that he buried the thumb in a field, but it is said that the haunting continued even afterwards. Despite its ominous reputation, John Merle's thumb has been sought after by collectors and paranormal enthusiasts over the years. Some even believe that the thumb possesses a sort of supernatural power that can be harnessed for personal gain. However, most people are content to leave the thumb where it belongs and avoid any potential consequences of disturbing its resting place. In our number 8 spot today, we have Old Neck. Old Neck, also known as the Swan Sea Devil, is a legendary figure that dates back to the 1890s and currently resides in the Swan Sea Museum. During that time, the prestigious St. Mary's Church, located in the town's center, was undergoing renovations, and when a local builder was turned down for the job, he sought revenge. He purchased a row of cottages adjacent to the church, demolished them, and built large brick offices, topping them with a carving of Old Neck. According to legend, he placed a curse on the church himself, declaring that this devil would remain laughing after its destruction. Years later, during World War II, the town was heavily bombed and St. Mary's, along with most of the town, was destroyed. However, the office building with Old Nick remained undamaged. After the war, Old Nick disappeared, but later resurfaced, prompting a petition to return him to his former spot and also a counter petition to keep him far away from the rebuilt church. Currently, Old Nick resides behind glass in the Swansea Museum, and it is said that the glass enclosure is for the protection of visitors. In our number seven spot, we have horn curls. On this same trip, looking for more artifacts, Isaac Hart found some Argali sheep skulls and horn curls from 1500 years ago, which were stacked in a pile by ancient hunters. And this finding completely discounted some old assumptions about the Mongolian people in the past. They were long thought to be herding societies, but these findings show that perhaps they were big hunters on mountain ice. Wow, sometimes just talking about this just makes me feel super grateful to be alive today. Although we are all wimps now, just going outside when it's cold, you know, I'm already looking for the outdoor heater. Where's the outdoor heater? <laughs> What are we in ancient times? In our number six spot, we have Iron Age tunic. Apparently, as Norway's glaciers begin to melt, archaeologists are beginning to uncover a ridiculous amount of ancient treasures, and some say it is about 2,000 plus items to date. One of the most notable items, in my opinion, is some recovered clothing that was found. Honestly, not one item is better than the other. They all tell a story from the past and help us better understand how mountain populations lived. But still, I think it is so cool cool to see that they found some clothing that's approximately from 300 AD, an Iron Age tunic to be exact. That's not that old though compared to some of the other items that were found on this dig that were approximately 4,000 years old, but still, pretty cool. And one of the older items that was found is in our number five spot today, which is the walking stick. Now this item also is not as old as some of the throwing darts that were found, but it's so unique and cool that I had to put it on the list. It's not just any old walking stick. It's a walking stick with runic inscription. Whoa, so cool. I actually have rocks with ruins on them at home that I bought from like a new AG store and I love to look at them. Ruins are truly fascinating and quite beautiful. So I'm a big believer in symbology and the energy and power infused in symbols. So anyways, when I saw this recovered walking stick from the 11th century AD, I kind of freaked out and needed to share. In our 
number four spot we have arrowheads. This is actually so cool. The entire video has been so fun to research, but finding this out was very interesting. I definitely need to go to museums more. I don't think I knew that I enjoyed history so much. Anyways, in 2003, a hiker was walking in a mountain pass near Sion, Switzerland, when he came across some treasures. Not gold, sadly, but what he found were items that are arguably way cooler from a Stone Age hunter from over 3,000 years ago. They were fragments of a bow, an arrow case, arrowheads, and leg coverings, all believed to be revealed due to the ice in the glaciers melting due to the rapidly changing climate. Pretty crazy. Imagine just going for a hike and discovering some ancient artifacts. I bet you there will never be a more interesting moment in your life. Although fine, the birth of your future child could be fairly special too. In our number three spot, we have the Viking whisks. Technically not considered ancient artifacts, but I thought this was cool and it needed an honorable mention. The melting of glaciers in Norway has actually revealed a lost mountain pass, and with it, hundreds of Viking artifacts have been discovered. The pass was discovered back in 2011, as ever since, the glaciers have continued to melt and more and more artifacts have been recovered. Covered. The archaeologists believe the pass was used from the Roman Iron Age 300 AD to the Viking Age 1000 AD. From horseshoes to sled fragments to wooden needles to wooden whisks, all kinds of artifacts have been recovered. One of the most unique items include a Viking mitten and a blue textile rug. Wow, imagine finding a rug frozen on a mountain. Also, it's just wild to think that the Vikings had rugs. All I can think of when I think of Vikings is war, so it's probably just me and my limited imagination due to my limited knowledge of history. In our number two spot, we have arrowheads. Over 100,000 artifacts were recently uncovered in a place called Nunalik in Alaska. These artifacts belong to the Yupik peoples who lived there. There have been stories told over many centuries of a gruesome massacre that occurred during the bow and arrow war days, which was a series of long, brutal battles. Up until recently, the area had been frozen in the subsoil known as permafrost. The most notable items that were found were the slate arrow points that further proved the stories that have been told about these war times. Although these items aren't technically ancient, they are truly a wonder for archaeologists to discover and I thought it needed to be on this list. In our number one spot, we have an ancient lunchbox. A 3,500 year old lunchbox was discovered in Switzerland in the Swiss Alps. No, it didn't have a 3,500 year old cheese sandwich in it, but it did have traces of ancient cereal. Whoa, some ancient dude was just walking around the Alps eating an ancient version of Lucky Charms. The lunchbox is a Bronze Age wooden container and apparently the food traces were of wheat and barley or rye grains. The lunchbox was made from Swiss pine and its rim was made from willow sewn together with European larch twigs. It was found in a melting ice patch in 2012. That's incredible. Probably my fave find on this list, but anything to do with food just makes me excited. Excuse me as I go pour myself a bowl of Lucky Charms. Feel free to join me if you like. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have a throwing spear. A throwing spear that was approximately crafted over 10,300 years ago was discovered by Dr. Craig Lee from Montana State University in 2007. It was discovered in northern Wyoming. 10,300 years ago, holy moly. Just saying that is so trippy and hard to wrap my brain around the idea of people existing at that point. But in any case, this spear, at first glance appeared just like a stick, but then after closer inspection, he discovered that it was a dart from a throwing spear. At this point, it is the oldest frozen artifact found yet. It's been a source of inspiration for others to continue the hunt for artifacts that are being revealed as a result of melting ice patches, and it certainly has created a sense of urgency for people to get hunting for these unbelievable items. In our number nine spot, we have the Yukon treasures. A size four moccasin shoe from 1400 years ago was found melting in the Yukon and my inner shopaholic is super excited about it. So of course I had to include it on this list. Along with this shoe, two other items were found. A barbed antler projectile point from about 
1200 years ago, and throwing darts from 9,000 years ago. Apparently, they were found by a husband and wife in 1997 who were hunting doll sheep in the Yukon Mountains when they smelt something extremely strange. It was dung. Yes, poop from a caribou. But the thing is, caribou hadn't been in this area for many, many years, so they decided to inspect it. <laughs> Naturally? No, I wouldn't. Anyways, I guess they discovered that the poop was from thousands of years ago that had frozen into ice, and close behind it were these artifacts that had melted along with it. Pretty wild. In our number eight spot, we have animal hair rope. While out exploring the mountaintops of Western Mongolia, archeologist and researcher Isaac Hart of the University of Utah discovered something quite interesting that he felt would truly help with discovering more about the Mongolia people in ancient times. They discovered a finely woven piece of animal hair rope. This rope was first thought to have been dropped in the ice recently, however, after scientists performed some radiocarbon tests on it to see how old it was, it was proven to be more than 1,500 years old. Wow, that's some old rope. Next up, we have the Greenland Norse textiles. Uh, these textiles are a collection of ancient fragments discovered in 1921 in various archaeological sites in Greenland. The textiles provided insights into the types of clothing and weaving techniques of the Norse settlers who lived in Greenland during the medieval period. The sites where these fabrics were found are part of the remnants of Norse settlements in Greenland, which thrived between the 10th and 15th centuries. Fabrics discovered include woolen garments and household items. They were remarkably well preserved due to the cold and dry climate of Greenland, which helped prevent decay. The textiles had a bunch of different weaving patterns, colors, and designs that reflected the skill and artistry of the Norse weavers back in the day. It's interesting to see what their clothing looked like beyond depictions of them in ancient artwork. These fabrics uh, have also been useful in understanding the challenges faced by the Norse settlers in Greenland and how they adapted to the harsh environment. And at number six, we have the Kostenki 17 artifacts. The Kostenki 17 artifacts were discovered at the Kostenki site in Russia, an archaeological site known for its wealth of Upper Paleolithic finds. The artifacts discovered at the site include bone and antler tools, bone ornaments, and various artifacts made from organic materials. Archaeologists dug up a number of bone and antler tools, like spear points, knives, and needles tools that had been crafted with remarkable precision. They also found ornaments made from bone like beads and pendants. On top of that, there were plenty of hunting tools like projectile points along with bones of animals that they had hunted. Some other notable discoveries at the site were engraved objects and fragments. These engravings often depict animals in geometric uh, patterns, showcasing the type of artwork they would have made at the time. At our number five spot, we have the Siberian Ice Maiden, also known as the Princess of Ukok or the Altai Princess. This is a mummy of a young woman that was discovered in 1993 in the Ukok Plateau of the Altai Mountains in Siberia. The Siberian Ice Maiden was discovered by Russian archaeologist Natalia Palasmak in a tomb on the Ukok Plateau. The site was located in an altitude about 8,200 feet. The mummy is believed to date back to around 500 BC, making her approximately 2,500 years old. The mummy was found in a wooden sarcophagus covered with felt blankets and a cowhide rug. She was dressed in intricately woven garments made of wool and felt that was also adorned with jewelry, you know, earrings, a necklace, various ornaments made of gold and other precious metal, so it's likely she held a high social status within the community. Her burial seemed to have been part of a complex ritual too, which led the archaeologists to believe she could have been a priestess or a noblewoman. Number four, the Etherican Brown Bear. 2019, scientists uh, made a pretty cool discovery in Siberia, a thousands year old brown bear carcass preserved in the permafrost. The ancient brown bear carcass was discovered by reindeer herders. It was incredibly well preserved because of the permafrost conditions which prevented decay. The carcass dates back approximately 3,500 years, placing it in the late Bronze Age. This age estimation was made through radiocarbon dating, a technique used to determine the age of organic materials based on their content of carbon-14 isotopes. Next on the list 
list is Quede Dan Shinichi, which was the name given to a remarkably well-preserved body discovered the Tachanshini Alaska Provincial Park in British Columbia, Canada. Quede Dan Shinichi was discovered by hunters in the remote wilderness northwestern British Columbia. The body was found partially buried in the ice, surrounded by a variety of artifacts. He was believed to have lived over 550 years ago, around the early 15th century, a member of one of the indigenous tribes that inhabited the region during that time. The body's preservation was due to the glacier ice, which acted as a natural freezer, protecting the remains from decomposition. And along with the body, again, a variety of artifacts were discovered. There was a robe made from animal hides, a spruce root hat, a woven mat, a walking stick, various tools made from stone and bone. The body was then ceremonially reburied in 2000, following traditional rituals and protocols. Coming in at number two, we have the Landbreen tunic. In 2011, during archaeological excavations in Landbreen, Norway, this ancient piece of clothing was discovered. The tunic was a remarkable archaeological find, revealing more information about ancient Norse clothing and textile techniques. The Landbreen site in the mountains of Norway was once frequented by travelers during the Roman Iron Age, approximately 300 to 500 AD. Because of the ice and snow in the region, many artifacts, including textiles, have been incredibly well preserved. And the tunic, it's made of wool, dates back to around 230. AD. It's a tunic style garment with a natural brown color, a simple design. It has a twill weave, a pattern commonly used in textiles in that era. Just think of how much of our clothing, by the way, is going to be left behind after we eventually leave Earth or go extinct, let alone all our other crap. We churn out so much stuff on a constant basis, more so than at any point in history. I think finding stuff from this era is going to be so common in the future that it'll be more of a new rather than a remarkable find. Finally though, taking that number one spot is Otzi the Iceman. Now, why is this number one? I don't know, not really any particular ranking going on here, just uh, a good one to close off with. In September of 1991, hikers Helmut and Erica Simon stumbled upon a well-preserved human corpse high in the Alps near the border of Austria and Italy. Later known as Otzi the Iceman, the two hikers saw the remains and actually thought he could have died relatively recently. But no, Otzi was an ancient human who had lived over 5,000 years ago during the late Neolithic period. He was so well preserved because he'd been encased in ice for that thousands and thousands of years. His body was found in the Otzel Alps. The discovery site was in the Schnalzalval Sinalis Valley, a region that was once covered by glaciers completely. Scientists discovered that Otzi lived between 3359 and 3105 BCE, making him one of the oldest and most well preserved naturally mummified humans ever found. He was five foot five and weighed around 110 pounds. The age at the time of his death was estimated to be around 45 years old. Besides his body, researchers also found a bunch of artifacts and clothing items with him. A copper axe, a quiver of arrows, a bearskin cap, and a coat made of woven grass and hide. Otzi's remains and belongings are currently housed in the South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology in Balzano, Italy. And we are kicking things off with the 3,000 year old arrow. This is a super recent discovery, it just happened back in September. A glacial archaeologist named Espen Finstad was hiking through the Jotunheim Mountains in eastern Norway when he came across a wooden arrow. It was so well preserved that to the naked eye, it would probably look brand new. It even still had feathers on it. But Finstad estimated that this arrow was actually around 3,000 years old. He later determined it was likely used by a hunter in the late Stone Age to early Bronze Age. Finstad stated, what makes the arrow so impressive is its preservation. Though it is broken into three parts, the arrow remains attached to the shaft, as do the feathers known as fletchings which helped to stabilize the arrow's flight path. So this is just one of the many artifacts turning up uh, once frozen under you know thick layers of ice, you know, not just in Norway, but in cold climates all around the world as glaciers continue to melt. If you are enjoying our content so far, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to leave your thoughts, uh, your comments, complaints down below. Uh, 
I'll usually read them. At number nine, we have Mummy Juanita. Mummy Juanita, also known as the Ice Maiden or Lady of Empato, is an exceptionally well-preserved mummy of an Inca girl which was discovered in 1995. The mummy was found on Mount Empato, a dormant volcano in the Andes Mountains of southern Peru, by anthropologist Johann Reinhard and his team. Mummy Juanita is believed to have lived during the Inca Empire, making her one of the best preserved ancient bodies ever found. She was approximately 12 to 14 years old at the time of her death. The mummy was found at an altitude of about 20,600 feet, and her discovery was kind of accidental. Reinhard and his team were actually on a mission to recover another Inca mummy when they stumbled on her in a crevice. She was wrapped in several layers of colorful textiles and buried with various offerings, including ceramic and metal objects, food items, and small statues. She's probably sacrificed as an offering to the Inca gods. The mummy is currently on display in the Catholic University of Santa Maria's Museum of Andean Sanctuaries in Peru. Uh, you know, so get over there immediately. Tap on her glass encasing and uh, tell her Uncle James said hello. First person in the comments to do that will receive a, a wink emoji from me and a $10 gift certificate to Walden Books. Number eight, the mammoth mummy. No, this is not a giant sized human mummy. That would be pretty awesome. This is pretty awesome too, but it's, it's a mummified woolly mammoth. In 2010, a team of Russian scientists found a well-preserved mammoth in Siberia, later named Yuka. She was a young mammoth, about six to eight years old, and lived around 39,000 years ago. Yuka's body was in really good shape. Its body measured about two and a half meters in length, and it was remarkably intact with her trunk, bones, some of her flesh, hair, and even eyes still preserved, making her one of the most well-preserved mammoth specimens ever found. It's pretty incredible to see, not that I've ever seen it uh, in person, but based on pictures and video that I have seen of it, uh, crazy how well-preserved it is. Finding a dinosaur in this condition would be absolutely unreal. Anyway, they think she might have fallen into a mud pit or drowned, which helped to uh, preserve her so well. People probably butchered her for meat as there were cut marks on her bones. Scientists studied her DNA to learn more about mammoths and their connection to modern elephants. Right now, Yuka is currently being held in Moscow. In our number seven spot today, we have the Vampire of Dusseldorf. If you've ever been to a Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum, you know those places are stocked full of the weird and wonderful, and this item is absolutely no different. This Wisconsin museum holds the skull from the severed head of the Vampire of Dusseldorf, Peter Carton. Who is Peter? Well, this vampire man was actually a German serial killer from the 1930s. This man committed some incredibly atrocious acts for which he was tried and convicted. He ended up being found guilty for the killing of nine people as well as attempting to take the lives of seven more. This guilty verdict led to him being sentenced to beheading, which took place in 1931 when Peter was 48 years old. I'm not exactly sure why anyone would have wanted to keep his head and skull around, but clearly it happened and now people can go and visit it whenever they feel like it. This might be one museum I might stay away from to be perfectly honest. I've learned about way too many cursed items here and don't want to mess around with this one. In our number six spot today we have this viking sword. Archaeologists found a viking sword called Ulfbear that they were able to date somewhere from 800 to 1000 AD, but upon further research they were absolutely astounded at what they found. This sword was made with a level of sophistication that wasn't seen until at least 800 years later. The carbon content of the sword is three times higher than other swords of the time, and due to the impurities that were removed, the iron ore would have needed to be heated to at least 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This sword was so hard to believe to researchers that a blacksmith named Richard Furrer made a sword similar to this one and used technology that would have been available at the time of its making. He said that the process was the most complicated thing he had ever made and he even ended up using methods that weren't known to be used at the time. This is all super cool and stuff but it has me wondering what this sword was used for and what dark parts of history it holds. In our number five spot today, we have shackled skeletons. On an archaeological dig in 2016, researchers uncovered a scary site. Buried in the grounds in Athens, Greece, were at least 80 skeletons, all arranged in neat rows, 
all with iron shackles on their wrists. Stella Chrysalaki, who is the head of the excavation site, said, quote, they're all tied at the hands with handcuffs and most of them are very, very young and in a very good state of health when they were executed. This definitely adds a little bit of horror to this already gruesome scene. Apparently, the method of burial suggests that whoever these skeletons belong to weren't just the average run-of-the-mill lawbreakers and they may have been in trouble for some more serious crimes. It is believed that these skeletons might be the supporters of a man named Cylon. In 632 BC, Cylon, who was a former athlete, led an attempted coup in Athens. Of course, since I just called it attempted, it didn't work out, but apparently he then fled the city unharmed. Since he couldn't be punished for his crimes, that only leaves these souls who were just finally uncovered a few years ago. I know these are people who once lived and not artifacts, but I had to put them on this list today because this discovery and story are just something we have to be talking about. In our number four spot today, we have the Skurid Inn Beam. The Skurid Inn in Wales, upon first glance, just looks like a great place to enjoy some classic pub fare, maybe some fish and chips and a nice ale. But the history it holds tells a very different story because this used to be a place for public hangings. Seems like a weird spot for a pub now, doesn't it? The upper part of the inn used to be the courthouse where people were tried and convicted, and then if the case was made, they were executed on site. It is estimated that around 180 hangings took place right in that spot. They even made the weird decision to keep the original hanging beam up, and the grooves of where the rope wore into the wood can still be seen even to this day. Also, the inn has chosen to keep the original cells where the prisoners were kept just to add the maximum amount of creepiness to the entire place. It's probably haunted as well. This beam serves as a reminder of a different time, I guess, but if we're being totally honest, have things really changed all that much? In our number three spot today, we have these sacrificial offerings. In 2018, researchers sent some remote operated robots beneath the ground in Peru at Chavin de Huantar. These robots stumbled on more than anyone ever imagined when they found a network of 35 interlocked underground tunnels dating back 3,000 years. This is already fascinating and cool, and I have a ton of questions about this whole series of mysterious tunnels, but we've got to save that for another video video and instead talk about what it was they found inside of these tunnels, and that is the remains of at least three individuals. They had found more remains of other people, but these three skeletons specifically stood out because they weren't like the others. They weren't the skeletons of people who had high social standings. These remains they found were from people who were actually sacrificed in rituals. They were able to determine this because of the fact that these bodies were found face down under piles of rocks, which is of course course, not how people of a high social standing would have been buried at the time. This discovery certainly is a reminder of different times on Earth. In our number two spot today, we have an executioner axe. In a Swedish museum, there is an axe that dates back to between 1770 and 1866. This axe isn't just any old axe, however, as it once belonged to an executioner who used it on 88 people. Execution by axe, as you can imagine, was a lot more difficult in reality than movies make it seem, so these axes were specially designed. Rather than being a finely tuned piece of weaponry, these axes were simply designed to crush their way through flesh and vertebrae. I'll save you any more horrible descriptions and just say that the executioner didn't have an easy job for a variety of reasons, and it certainly was a job that required them to stay in great shape. Like I mentioned with the Skurid in beam, it's definitely good that things have changed since the days of public beheadings for capital punishment, but sometimes things don't really even seem all all that different. In our number one spot today, we have the Tower of Skulls. There's a city in Serbia that has an interesting tourist attraction. This tower dates back to a time when Serbia was still under Ottoman control in 1809. The first Serbian uprising was not going well, but the leader of the rebels, Stephen Sindelic, was determined to do something to change that. During the final stand at Seagar Hill, Stephen fired a round into a keg of gunpowder, which was inside of a fully stocked armory. You can only guess what this did. Of course, it caused a massive explosion that killed not only him and his men, but also all of the Turkish soldiers who were storming the trenches. In order to get their revenge on this move that Stephen made, the Turks then collected all of the rebels' bodies and removed their heads. They took the bodies of 952 rebels and sent them to Constantinople as trophies. And what did they do with the heads? 
Well, they built a tower, of course. This tower was 15 feet high, and the Turks built it right at the entrance to town. The skull tower was intended to be a reminder to not mess with them, but the Serbians decided to use their new metal as heck skull tower to show them what they were really made of. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have a tiny, creepy hand. This small, lifelike bronze hand was found at the Roman fort of Vindolanda, which is near Hadrian's Wall in England. This artifact was found by archaeologists and it quickly became quite a mysterious find. The reason for this is because of the fact that it is believed that this artifact may have been associated with a cult. This cult, called Jupiter Dolichenus, after the Roman god, of course, is a mystery cult that held their secrets close to their chest. This secretive cult existed and was very popular with the Roman army around the 3rd century. This hand is believed to have been left as an offering after there was a major invasion of Scotland that left a large number of people dead. Little more about this bronze statue is known, and that just might make it even creepier. In our number 9 spot today, we have vampire remains. A few years ago in Poland, during a dig, researchers uncovered some skeletal remains that date back to the 14th century, and if this find wasn't already gruesome enough, they quickly figured out this wasn't where the story ended. These skeletons appeared to have posthumous injuries inflicted onto them. Wondering why? Someone's fear of vampires is probably to blame. The skeletons had been decapitated and punctured at the spine, which is extremely gruesome, and then the severed heads were wedged between heavy stones. This is what the lore at the time suggested was the appropriate actions for those who might be vampires in order to prevent them from rising from the dead again. As it turns out, as many of us now know, unfortunately, many of these people who were said to be supernatural or evil were probably just suffering from diseases of life. According to researchers, during this time period, people who were suffering from things like kyphosis or perhaps cholera were often thought of as being vampires or witches. In our number 8 spot today, we have Jerry Bibb Balasok's gravestone. This tombstone goes hand in hand with an absolutely insane story of Jerry's life. The story of it is that Jerry, who was a professional wrestler, ended up vanishing after getting in trouble with the law. He was wanted for charges of fraud, and while no one knew his whereabouts for six months, when his mother picked up a magazine one day which featured the victims of the horrible cultist Jonestown Massacre, she sadly saw her son's picture alongside all of the others. This led to there being a tombstone, of course, made for Jerry, although his body would have already been buried in California. So this all happened in 1978, but let's flash forward to 1990. In that year, a man named Ricky A. Weta was arrested for attempting to take someone's life. He was fingerprinted upon his arrest, and who would have thought Ricky turned out to be none other than the presumed dead Jerry. The whole story was of course national news, because how could this have possibly happened? In the end, Jerry was caught and brought to justice. But here's the thing, the tombstone. It's a reminder of the Jonestown Massacre. In our number 7 spot today, we have Charles Manson's TV. There are many haunting tales surrounding this TV, and honestly, that makes a lot of sense considering its history, as it was the one that was present in the Spawn Ranch where Manson and his followers resided for a period of time. This ranch was a former movie ranch that had fallen into disrepair and was used as a hideout by the Manson family. It was during their time at the ranch that they planned and carried out their atrocious crimes. The TV was present in the living quarters at the ranch and was said to have played a significant role in Manson's ability to manipulate and control his followers. Manson would often and use the TV as a tool to brainwash and indoctrinate his followers with apocalyptic visions and very harmful ideologies. The TV was seized as evidence by the police following the arrest of the Manson family members and has since been sold at auction. The exact whereabouts of the TV at this point in time are unknown, but many have said that the TV is cursed by the evil energy that Manson himself held. In our number 6 spot today we have the Atlantis Ring. The Atlantis Ring is a clay ring discovered in 1860 in an Egyptian high priest's tomb in the Valley of Kings. Howard Carter acquired the ring and kept it until his death in 1939. The ring is believed to be over 5,000 years old and is decorated with very unique geometric symbols not seen before in Egyptian culture. What makes this story so intriguing is that Carter, who discovered King Tut's tomb, claimed to have worn the ring as a talisman during the tomb's opening, which protected him from the curse. Unlike other members of his team, he did not die a mysterious death after 
afterward. Instead, he attributed his protection to the ring's power. So I guess the ring is kind of like an anti-cursed object due to its association with the protection of Howard Carter. Although replicas are available, none are believed to possess the power of the original Atlantis ring. In our number 5 spot today, we have Bella Lugosi's mirror. Bella Lugosi, the actor who famously portrayed Dracula on screen, owned a mirror that is said to be cursed. According to legend, the mirror was given to Lugosi by a fan who claimed that it was possessed by the spirit of a dead woman. Lugosi allegedly experienced strange occurrences after acquiring the mirror, including seeing the reflection of the woman's face in the glass. He tried to get rid of the mirror, but it reportedly kept returning to him. After his death, the mirror passed through the hands of several owners who also reported strange phenomena associated with it, such as cold spots and apparitions. Some even claimed to have seen Lugosi's face staring back at them from the mirror. Today, the whereabouts of the mirror are unknown, and it remains one of the most mysterious and haunted objects in Hollywood history. In our number 4 spot today, we have Uluru Rock. Uluru Rock is a massive sandstone formation located in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia. It is a sacred site for the indigenous people of the area, and it is known as Ayers Rock. Visitors are advised not to take anything from the site, as it is considered disrespectful and can bring bad karma. However, some people still choose to smuggle pieces of rock out of the area. This act has reportedly resulted in severe consequences, including bad luck, illness, and even the death of loved ones. The curse associated with these stolen rocks is so strong that it is common for the company that manages the tours of the formation to receive letters of apology with the returned rocks. This phenomenon happens so often that the company expects to receive at least one letter a day. While some may dismiss this as a mere coincidence, the frequency and consistency of these occurrences suggest otherwise. In our number 3 spot today, we have Natalie Wood's yacht. The haunting tales surrounding Natalie Wood's yacht, named The Splendor, have been the subject of speculation and controversy for decades. In November 1981, the actress was on a weekend trip aboard the yacht with her husband Robert Wagner and friend Christopher Walken. The circumstances surrounding her death have remained a mystery, but it is known that Wood drowned in the water near the yacht and her body was found the next morning. The yacht itself has been the subject of strange occurrences and haunting tales ever since. According to reports, strange noises and unexplained occurrences have been observed on board the yacht. Witnesses have reported hearing unexplained voices and footsteps, as well as doors opening and closing on their own. Some have even claimed to have seen the ghostly apparition of Natalie Wood herself still wearing the same clothing she had on the night of her death. Despite the rumors and tales, there is no concrete evidence to support the idea that the yacht that the yacht is actually haunted. However, the tragic circumstances surrounding Natalie Wood's death and the mysterious events that have been reported on the yacht have contributed to its reputation as a haunted vessel. In our number 2 spot today, we have The Screaming Skull. The Screaming Skull is housed in Burton Agnes Hall in England and is believed to have belonged to Catherine Ann Griffith. Catherine was the youngest in her family and enjoyed wandering the property, but on one such walk, she was attacked and robbed by a group of individuals who left her severely injured. Despite being brought back to the hall, Catherine passed away a few days later. Before her death, she requested that her family remove her head and keep her skull so that they would always have a piece of her with them. Following her burial, the family experienced strange occurrences in the house, including bumps, moans, and screams. It was then said that they decided to fulfill Catherine's request and the strange happenings stopped. However, when a maid found the skull and threw it out of a nearby window, which is a strange thing to do when you find a skull, the strange occurrences began again. Eventually, the family decided to place the skull in a secret spot within the walls of the house so that Anne's spirit could rest in peace. The story serves as a reminder to honor the wishes of those who have passed to avoid any lingering spiritual activity. In our number one spot today, we have The Dark Mirror, finishing this list off with another cursed mirror. This one is now a part of the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and Occult, and that in itself is enough to understand why it is considered to be a cursed object. The museum acquired the mirror from its previous owner who had bought it from a psychic fair. Despite being created sometime around the 1820s or 1830s, the mirror still boasts a beautiful appearance, but it is believed to hold some dark secrets. The former owner reported that every time they looked into the mirror, they saw disturbing images that left them feeling very unsettled. Since joining the museum's collection, guests have also reported similar experiences, seeing reflections of their own dead bodies and other unsettling apparitions. Thank you.